catechism that we started, and so I am a little skeptical about how this is going to go. I told you we were going to ask some questions and get some answers, and we would review those. Uh, so we're going to review the first question that we looked at three weeks ago, and then we're going to give you a new question tonight. Okay? So the question we looked at a few weeks back was, what is our only hope in life and death? All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and throw out there and see if somebody uh, remembers uh, the answer. In fact, I can give a few of somebody's opportunity if they, want to, if they want to do so. What is our only hope in life and death? That we belong to, that we are not our own, that we belong to God, or that we are not our own in life and death, that we belong to God and to our Savior Jesus Christ. Really, really close. <laughs> Goodness and glory 
wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. Now that's a full, thorough, complete answer, right? There's a lot there, um, but we, wanna, we don't want to dismiss it, right? We said at the beginning, the, the whole purpose of looking at these questions as answers is so that the truth of God will dwell in us richly. So we don't want to just, you know, kind of glance by to say, okay, well, the kid's answer, I can do that, so we're going to do that. Right, so let's just read it together, uh, and, and as we kind of double up and we hear it and we read it, it'll start to sink in a little bit. All right, so you join with me and we'll say this, right? What is God? God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable in his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens except through him and by his will. I know that's a lot to take in. All right, so... Um, have you wrote it down already? You guys, note takers, you got it down? Working on taking pictures of the screen, that's a good thing. Have you downloaded the app? Yes, some of you have downloaded the app. That's the way to go. So, what you think when you think about God is the most important thing about you. So if, if, when you think about God, these truths come to mind, it's going to make a dramatic impact on how you respond to God, on how you respond to each other, and how you respond to circumstances. Because right? what we're seeing here, and well, let me just move ahead. I don't want to, uh, we'll look at the kid's answer, right? You guys are smiling now. <laughs> I can remember that. We, my kids and I did this years ago, and they still remember this. Right? So what is God? God is the creator of everyone and everything. I think you can remember that, right? He is the creator of everyone and everything. And our verse to back that up is Psalm 86. Now there's really no one, one verse or passage of scripture that is going to encompass everything that we saw in that answer. Right? When, when, when we give that answer that God is the creator and sustainer and eternal and infinite and unchangeable, there's no one verse that's going to sum up everything we read in that answer. Uh, so Psalm 86, verse 8 says this, There is none like you among the gods, O Lord. There is no one like God. Right? The God of the Bible is unique. He is utterly holy other than anyone or anything. Right? So that's why we come to Psalm 86 here. So, none like you among the gods, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great. And do wondrous things, you alone are God. Again, verse 15, it says, But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast <coughs> love and faithfulness. Now, if you're using your Bible tonight, you can go ahead and talk, turn to Psalm 86, but we're going to refer back to that a few times this evening. Uh, but that's the passage that we want to use to kind of back up uh, our, our truth about who God is. And God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. That's an important it's an important truth to grab a hold of, right? God is the creator. I am the created. As created beings, we answer to the creator. We are, ultimately, we're going to stand before the one who made us. And we're going to give an account. And as the creator, he has the right. He has the right to tell us what to do and how to live, right? That, that only makes sense. If you make something... You had authority over that, and you intended a purpose for that thing made. Well, this is what is true of God. Right? And, and God, as the Creator, is He's far above us. He's infinitely higher than we are. Because we are created beings, we are, we are <coughs> finite creatures. Right? But God is infinite. And, and, and really, as we look at that definition, right, He is far beyond what we are able to grasp or understand. The theological term for that is 
incomprehensible. Right? We cannot fully understand or fully know God. Now, God wants us to know Him. And, and we can know Him. But we cannot know Him fully. And, and so, tonight, as we, as we think of this big picture of who God is, my prayer is that it would just move us to adoration and worship. That's what happened. We made reference to Psalm 139 this morning, talking about God knitting us together in our mother's womb. Well, in that psalm, David is just thinking about the, the attributes of God. He thinks about the omnipotence of God, that God is all-powerful. He thinks about the omnipresence of God. You know, he thinks about the omniscience of God, that he knows all things. In verse 6 of Psalm 139, he says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. You know, I, can't, I can't attain it. Right? This, this God is greater and higher than me. And then ultimately in verse 17, he says, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. If David is just so overtaken with the greatness and the glory of God that he's moved to worship. And so that is my prayer tonight. What is God? Let me ask you, right? you don't have to answer, but what comes to your mind when you think about God? Because that's important. It matters. Right? It matters for life. Um, I, I'll give you the opportunity. I, I wasn't sure I was going to do this, but would anybody want to share an example of a time where a truth about <coughs> God impacted the way you responded to a situation in life? Right? And i got a zillion examples going through my mind at this moment. Um, you know, about oh, a year and a half ago, uh, you know, our family came back from a camping trip, and uh, about a week or so later, my wife started having double vision and slurred speech, and, you know, that was an immediate trip to the emergency room. Like, what is going on, you know? And we go to the emergency room, and they're doing a spinal tap, and they're doing all these tests, and they don't know what's going on, and, and the symptoms aren't really getting better. In fact, it continues over days, a week long, and we're just sitting here going, I don't know what's happening. You know, and, and we're not exactly sure if she's going to get better. Right? They don't know what's going on. They're sitting cultures away and tests away, and we're just kind of... And in that instance, and in that moment, I run to the truth that God knows the end from Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 says, I am God, there is none else. I am God, there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. I, I am left in the dark, but my God knows exactly what is going on. Right? And so in that moment, that truth is going to bring us comfort <coughs> and hope. And so there's an instance in which right, a truth about God affects how we respond to a circumstance. Anybody else want to share? Maybe a time where a particular truth impacted the way you responded to a situation or circumstance. That's what my response. I'll share when we went with uh, Caleb to ABC and he was unsure where he wanted to go. And we got on a campus and he was on the campus 15 minutes and he's like, this is where I'm supposed to be. We're like, praise the Lord, this is great. And we left the campus, and then we got to the business office. And we learned how much it was. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Caleb. I said, like, hey, okay, Mom, God will provide. He wants me here. And he, and, and I believed that. But at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, $20,000 is a lot of money. You know, how are we going to come up with $20,000? But um, we, we knew that if that's where God wanted, that he would provide. And, you know, we're... Facing the same thing with Carly and health issues and, and where she's going to get to college. And we know that God is a provider and we don't really have to worry about it. And if it's a, if he doesn't provide the money, then it's not meant for her to go there. So. That's a great example. One we're walking through as well. So I appreciate you sharing. Anybody else before we move ahead?
I, I just want you to see, right, that this matters. It matters for your everyday life. It's not a matter of, right, sometimes we think of theology as this kind of ivory tower thing where these truths about God are, you know, they're only for pastors, and they're only for theologians, and for, yeah, but no, the, the truth about God impacts you every day. It impacts how you relate to your husband and wife, and how you relate to your children, and how you respond to the trials and the storms of life that inevitably come. These truths make a difference at road level, right? And so I, I don't want you to miss that. Uh, and, and, and the truth is, the more you know about God, the more equipped you are going to be to handle whatever life comes at you. Right? And, and so this is a great pursuit. It is the ultimate pursuit. To ask the question, what is God? And to chase that answer, that is the, the most glorious pursuit that you, can, that you can run after. You say, I mean, I'm not talking about going to seminary. I'm, and, you know, I'm just saying that Open up the Word of God and see what it has to say about who He is. John Calvin said this, Were a hundred lives given us, this one thing would be sufficient to engage our attention. A hundred lives given us. And he's saying what? To pursue the knowledge of God, a hundred lives is not enough. But, as it has been said, what ought to be preferred to all other things is despised and neglected. Isn't that the truth? What should capture our attention? What should, what, what, what should be the focus of our thoughts and our mind is oftentimes thrown by the wayside and we focus in on other things. So what we want to do right now is just kind of stop and sing in response and give you an opportunity to stand up. <laughs> so let's look at this answer one more time. You can stand up. But what is God? All right, so we're going to give you the full, the full answer, just so you can kind of have those truths resonating in your mind. We'll read them together once more. What is God? God is the creator and sustainer of everyone and everything. He is eternal, infinite, and unchangeable in his power and perfection, goodness and glory, wisdom, justice, and truth. Nothing happens. And that's why I'm coming to you. 
And so what I'd like to do is ask if somebody would be willing to pray. Uh, focus in on that particular aspect. Just adoration. Just giving glory and praise. Not asking for anything. Just, God, you are good. And you are glorious. And it could be, it doesn't, like I said, man, woman. But if, if someone would like to pray and just lead in that area of adoration for us tonight, uh, you can do so. You just stand up and say, oh, I'll do that. And if you're not willing, then I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Dear Lord, you are our own home. Yes. You're everything, dear Lord. Many times I've lived my own life, dear Lord, concerned for nothing but myself. I know I don't see you clearly, but one day I will, dear Lord. And you are glorious, you are majestic, dear Lord, and I'll see one day in all your Shekinah glory, dear Lord, that you are worthy to be praised, even when it hurts, dear Lord. And here recently it has, in a lot of aspects of my life. And I know I'm not alone in this body, dear Lord, but a lot of us are facing a lot of, di a lot of things, dear Lord, and I'm just um, to be praised that I, you are worthy of praise no matter where they're at. No matter where they're at. You're the one that that previous into life, do, Lord. I, I got to remind myself that I'm just dirt that you fashioned into life. Mm -hmm. You breathe this into life, dear Lord, and I just thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for this church, and I just give you glory, and one day I will stand before your throne, and I will praise you for an eternity, and even learn more and more about you as eternity rolls, dear Lord. I'll never know you completely. You're far above my mind, dear Lord. And I think of you as creator, dear Lord, that you put us on the spitting rock and we're in, this, in the correct order. One way or the other, dear Lord, we would die or freeze to death. Dear Lord, that that's your hand is in holding it all together. That you are glorious. And that you are sovereign over all, dear Lord. That you, you change lives, dear Lord. You change mine. I was on my road to where I... Where I didn't want to go, dear Lord, that I that you you took me and you, you made me something new, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. And forgive me where I fall short because many days I do, dear Lord. So many days. And I just thank you for that. Thank you so much for the blood that you shed on the cross for me. For all those that, that you called, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Even through the battles, dear Lord, you had your way. Mm -hmm. Have your way in this service, dear Lord. Have your way in my life and all our lives, dear Lord. That that you are Lord of all, and you are glorious. You know, angels bow in your presence, dear Lord, and so will I. You, you chose surrender, and so will I, dear Lord. You, you turned your cheek, you let people beat you, and I'm afraid that if I had been there, dear Lord, I would have been among the scoffers myself, dear Lord, and I thank you so much for that you bore my sin, my shame, that I should have taken upon myself, it should have been mine, that I am free because of you and what you've done, and that you dwell inside me, dear Lord. And all, your, all those who call from your name that you call your own, dear Lord. And I thank you so much for all that you've given us, and you are worthy to be praised forevermore. Forevermore, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 And look at verse 5 of Psalm 86. It says, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. And then down in verse 15, You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And David recognizes as he comes to prayer that he is a sinful man, and he needs the forgiveness of God. And so when we pray, when we call upon his name, we want to come confessing our sin to him. And tonight we want to do that together. Uh, not necessarily open confession, but I'm going to ask somebody to pray and, and just confess. Uh, our sin, and as, as they pray, if you need to deal with the Lord in that way, then now is a good time to do that. If there's things that you just need to acknowledge and say, Lord, I have sinned against you and I need your forgiveness. I think you know, in light of what we looked at this morning, perhaps we just need to confess our, our apathy uh, in this area of the fight for life. Uh, our apathy towards those who are walking through hard difficult situations, and uh, maybe a lack of grace. Uh, and, and so I'm going to ask if somebody be willing to lead us
Uh, just in this area of confession, you can make confession for us as a nation, confession for us as a church. Uh, but if somebody would be willing to do that, I know it's not easy. This evening, I'm reminded of your servant Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Man of unclean lips, mm -hmm. among the people of unclean lips. Father, I just ask forgiveness first for myself, Father, in all the ways that I've sinned against you, broken you. Promises to Father, not lived up to your plan and your purpose for my life. And Father, as we looked at the service from this morning, pray for us as a people, as a nation, it would become a culture of death when you are the God of life. Father, I lift up our country now. Father, that you would work in hearts and minds to see that every life is precious. That every life bears your image. Father, that every life is valuable. And that every life is created to point to you. Father, for this church, just ask forgiveness in the times that we have failed you as a body of believers. That we have been quick to rush to judgment or failed to reach out to those who are hurting or in need. Although when we haven't taken the opportunity to share the gospel with those who so desperately need it. Father, when we have put our priorities above your priorities. Father, when we've been caught up in the things of this world that we've taken our eyes off the prize, mm -hmm. which is you, which is your son, which is that eternity that Bob spoke of. Father, the opportunity to stand before you, to praise you, to sing your praises. Father, to be fully known by you. Yes. Father, again, I just ask your forgiveness in these areas where we have failed you. Father, you also told us that you did not give us a timid spirit, but a spirit of power. And Father, again, I ask your forgiveness where we have not relied on the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, where we have decided to do things in our own power, and in our own way, and in our own time. Father, as we were so rightly reminded just a little bit ago, nothing happens that is outside of your control, that is outside of your will. Father, forgive us when we go outside of your will. When we decide that we should be God, that we should be the one in control. Father, we are so woefully inadequate to control anything. When we compare ourselves to the one who created and sustains the universe. Father, we are the created ones. Father, we owe everything we have to you because of who you are and because of what you have done and through what your son has done for us on the cross. Father, we do come as sinners Father, through the work of your Son, Jesus, on the cross, we can stand before you righteous. If we believe in the work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, that our sins are washed away, that our crimson stains have been replaced, and we are by this sin. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your long suffering, for your patience. Father, for loving us first when we did not love you. 
And we ask to pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Verse 12, <coughs> David's prayer, when you come to hear the end, he just says this. He says, I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. And David recognized that already, before he even finishes this prayer, that all things go to God. And, and, and so we want to understand that tonight as we come to this good, glorious, great God, uh, that He alone is worthy of all things. For the prayers that He will answer in the ways that He will answer them, and we're not going to... Um, we're not going to take time to do that just now. We can kind of incorporate that in as we close uh, here. I want to move forward to that area of supplication just because I had a couple areas I want to hit on uh, before, we, uh, before we close tonight. And uh, looking at verses 14 through 17, uh, just listen with me as I read. It says, O oh God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see me and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Now, those caught my attention today as we kind of focused on that issue of the sanctity of life this morning. And David's saying, insolent men have risen up against me. You know, that, that's what we're saying, right? Men have shaken their fist in the face of God. And so as I'm looking here at the end of this prayer, David's saying, men are seeking my life. But then down in, in verse 20, he says, save the, or verse 16, save the son of your maidservant. Now he's saying, save me. <laughs> but... We can think of the countless numbers of children that are being murdered day in and day out. And we can say, Lord, save, save the sons and daughters that are being, that are being killed day by day. By day. And, and, and what does he say? You have helped. If, if, if there's an answer to this, because it's, when we look at it, it seems helpless, doesn't it? It does for me. It feels overwhelming as if there's no way that we can win this fight. And yet, our help comes from the Lord. And so, Joe's already kind of began to pray toward that end for us tonight. But I, I want to leave you with that thought in mind. As you, as you go from here, be, be diligent in praying for life. That God would deal with insolent men. And that He would safe. And, and may he raise may he may he raise our hearts to, to fight this fight. You know, we talked about some of these things this morning. Perhaps you need to ask God to forgive you uh, for for not dealing with someone in a gracious manner. Uh, and maybe you need to go, ask God to direct your heart and how to be involved in this fight for life. But let us pray. Let us pray that this murderous act of abortion would become unthinkable, unthinkable in our culture. And the last thing I want us to see before we close tonight, back in verse 9, yeah, he says, All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Now that's a response to, right, to verse 10. You are great and do wondrous things. There's none like you in verse 8. So he's saying, this great, glorious God, there are going to be people from all nations who come and worship you. We know that is the end of all things, right? Revelation 5. People from every tongue, tribe, and nation gathered around the throne of God, worshiping the Lamb who has been slain. You, you, you see... The glory and the greatness of God is the, is the fuel for missions. Right? And so we're going to have missions conference next Sunday, but we do missions because God is great and because He's glorious. Right? You're here tonight because God has changed you. Right? He, is, 
He's, he's made you new in Christ. He saved you, and because He saved you, and because you know this God now, you have a desire for others to know Him. And that is the fuel that drives us to share the gospel and to take it to the ends of the earth. That's why missions exist. Missions exist for the glory of God. This coming Sunday will be, as a church, our 50th annual missions conference. That, that's a testimony to the faithfulness of God. And we need to spend some time in prayer asking God to be at work. You know, to, to use this in the life of our church, in our lives individually. We want to pray that we would be a blessing to our missionaries who are coming, right? the Smiths who we partner with in Zambia. Ask God that we would bless them, that we would encourage them as they come. But at the same time, we want to pray that God would ignite our hearts for His glory and for the spread of the gospel. Jamie has, you know, God's been working in his heart and just directing him into what to share with us. He's been messaging me back and forth this week and he's going, you know, I'm excited about what God's going to do. But we need to be excited and we need to be praying that God would do a work in us and at the same time, we want to pray that God would raise up laborers. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And we want to pray that God would raise up laborers here, among us, that God would send out servants to go out into the harvest field. And so that's going to be our focus as we close tonight in prayer. Uh, and, and I want to just ask if somebody wants to do that. Somebody would like to close praying, supplication, asking God to work mightily through the missions conference to meet these days. Okay. Heavenly Father, we uh, we gather here this evening for your name is in praise. For you are holy, for you are righteous, for you are just. God, we come to you, Lord, to close in prayer. We're asking you to do a mighty work in us here. As we approach our fifth missions conference, Lord, we, we come and we pray that our hearts are, are open, that we are willing to be used by you, that during this time, that a fire will be ignited in us, that, Lord, it is, is seen by many, that, Lord, you give us a desire to, to share the gospel with those people around us, Lord, that I even pray, Lord, that there are some that, that you uh, uh, awaken in their heart and, Lord, give them the desire to go into the mission field. But I pray for, for uh, uh, this church that we are in light. Not just the purpose word, but a light in the world. Or that we can change, uh, um, we can be a, a used to change people uh, through the gospel all over the world. God, I pray that, uh, Lord, you use grace gospel. That our hearts and our minds would be unified together. That we come together the church, Lord, just to a desire to share the gospel, the good news. Lord, I pray for Jamie and Mandy and their family. Lord, that the work that they are doing, Lord, that you continue to give them courage. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that as they are here this, with us next week, that our church, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, do encourage them. Lord, they, they lift them up. And, and Lord, just show them how much we love them, how much we care for them. And that uh, we love the ministry they are, they are doing and, and that we are a part of that ministry. We can continue to support and, and just, uh, Lord, give them, uh, Lord, a renewed heart to continue to be in the ministry. Lord, I pray that you uh, even make it possible for Grace Gospel to do more for them. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the mission field, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through support.
support. Uh, and God, we know that, that through you, you're, it's limitless what you can do. And Lord, I just pray that grace gospel, the shining light. Lord, I just pray you bring us all together next week. We love you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for just this mission, this conference that's coming out. We love you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, our heart's desire is just that this Sunday night is supposed to be slightly different each and every week. Uh, we like to have some different elements and different aspects. Uh, I asked some of you about testimonies uh, a few weeks back. Uh, if you're interested in sharing your testimony, we'd love to have people do so. Uh, just kind of spark, you know, spread throughout so we don't have to have everybody all at once. But if that's something you'd be interested in doing, please talk to me or Troy. We'd love to just kind of integrate that into our time together. I think there's great benefit in hearing how God has saved people, and not only how He saved people, but how He's working in their life now. Um, and so let me encourage you to do that. And then we'll just be dismissed with this, uh, and I'm going to make it easy for you, all right? Kids' version. What is God? <laughs> That's pretty easy, right? God is the creator of everyone and everything. You got it. All right. God bless. Have a good day. God bless you.